one of the reasons why most people do not invest is because we feel like after we've budgeted for all our mandatory bills and expenses and paid for everything we need to pay for during the month we simply don't have enough money left to save or even to invest but what if i told you that you could start your investment journey with as little as 5000 kenyan shillings in today's episode i'm taking you through seven investments that you can do with as little as 5000 kenyan shillings my name is susan wanjiko welcome to another episode of finance friday <music> investment option that you have with 5000 Kenyan shilling is obviously the money market funds. If you've known me long enough, you know I talk about money market funds, money market funds, money market funds. And there's a reason for that. Money market funds are peculiar or unique in the sense that you're able to kill two birds with one stone. You're able to save because they give you capital preservation, which means there's little to no risk of losing your money. But B, you're also able to invest because you get an interest on your money, all right? Now, most money market funds in Kenya give you an interest rate ranging between uh, maybe 6% to 9%. Before COVID, the rates were definitely better because it was um, going all the way to maybe 12% uh, on the maximum. But the interest rates that most money market funds give you are actually able to compensate you for inflation. What do I mean by that? The inflation rate in Kenya right now is slightly above 5%, which means that the prices of goods, services, and commodities are increasing by 5%. That should tell you that when you're making investment choices, you want to choose investments that are actually giving you a bare minimum of 5%, so that on the bare minimum again, you are actually compensated for inflation. A money market fund helps you to do that. Now, with 5,000 Kenyan shillings, you could invest in literally any money market fund in Kenya. And we have some that even allow you to invest with as little as 1,000 bob or even 500 Kenyan shillings. So that's option number one. The second investment that you can do with 5,000 Kenyan shilling is what we call a bond fund or a fixed income fund. Now, a fixed income fund is a fund is uh, found under the umbrella of unit trusts and um, where you get money market funds is also where you get the bond fund. Now, the bond fund ideally invests your money in corporate bonds and treasury bonds. So your fund manager, or in this case, the unit trust that you've invested in, particularly the bond fund, will take our money. They will pull um, money from different investors and then select bonds that are actually performing well and invest in, in, um, in those bonds. And when the bonds actually generate a return, then they pay their clients a return. So you don't, you're not the one to actually go to the bond market and source for these um, investments, bond investments the fund manager or the unit trust in question is the um are the people who actually go to do the investment on your behalf now if we are taking an example of maybe CIC, the company, you'll find that they have a money market fund whose um, uh, minimum investment amount is 5000 but they also have a bond fund whose minimum investment is 5000 If you look at companies like Britain, um, they also have the same. So majority of companies where you will find money market funds, if you inquire further, if they do not advertise, you will also realize that they have a bond fund. So this is a very good investment opportunity for someone who wants to to expose their money to the bond market but you don't necessarily have the 50,000 or 100,000 that is usually required for instance if you're investing in um the normal bonds or the um or the infrastructural bonds that are usually auctioned on the cbk website so when people hear that the minimum investment amount for a bond is fifty thousand, they kind of feel like okay but where would they get fifty thousand right now or even a hundred thousand you don't have to have that if you go through unit trusts and then you invest through the bond fund to be specifically your money is still being exposed to the bond market in fact both corporate and treasury bonds but at a low entry level of a minimum of, of 5,000 or maybe depending on the company that you're choosing, it could be less. So that's option number two. 
option number three of where you can invest your money if you only just have 5,000 Kenyan shillings is what we call the balanced fund. Now, the balanced fund in an, is another fund under unit trusts, okay? If you're not already realizing this right now, unit trusts are the place to be if you're just a new investor or if you want investment options that you can penetrate the market with very little entry fees or an entry amount. Now, the balanced fund, just by the name, is a balanced portfolio or it provides a balanced portfolio. So you will give your money to the fund manager or the unit trust and they are going to actually invest your money in treasury bills and bonds. Okay, they're going to have a bit of your money going into corporate debt and then they're going to have a bit of your money going into equities. So ideally what that does is that it exposes your money not just to one asset class, but to a diversified asset or to a, a diversified portfolio where you have. Um, so let me give you an example uh, for a company like maybe Sunlam. I see that they probably have um, sometimes you'll find that they have uh 60 percent or maybe 50 percent in treasury securities so that is uh bills and bonds and then you have maybe another 30 percent going into private corporate debt and then you have another 20 percent going into the stock market or equities so you see the risk that your money is being exposed to in that particular um investment option um is 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 moderate right because we have a mix of low risk investments and high risk investment in this case the stock market so the balance fund is a very good investment option for someone who's not sure and you're feeling okay i want to invest my money like i want to expose my money to um maybe low risk investments but i don't want all my money to be in low risk investments i also want a bit risk but i don't want too much risk Okay, so if you feel like you want just your moderate, your your um, uh, your risk appetite is moderately risky, or you're a moderate risk person, then the balance fund would be perfect for you because your money would be exposed to a diversified portfolio. All right, um, but then it wouldn't be as highly risky. All right, so that's the um the the third option, the balance fund. The fourth option that you have where you can invest your money is the equity funds. Again, equity funds are found under unit trusts. And just by the name equities, we already know that this fund manager will invest your money in the stock market. All right. Now, I'm sure some people are wondering, if you're watching me right now, you're wondering, so why would I invest through equity funds if I can just go directly to the stock market through the Nairobi Securities Exchange and buy shares for myself? Here's the difference between investing in equity funds and going directly to the stock market through the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Now, the equity in the equity fund, you don't necessarily get to decide which shares to buy. So you can go to the fund manager and tell them, buy me Safaricom shares or buy me equity or KCB shares, okay? So because they're a fund manager, they have Coach Susan's money, they have Njoroge's money, they have Wanjiko's money, they have 100,000 other Kenyans' money. They pull that money, they pull those resources and select the best performing stocks in the different industries in Kenya or in the Nairobi. Ruby Securities Exchange and buy the best performing. So it is a mix of portfolio. So if you want to actually get into stock investing, but you don't know which stocks to choose, like you don't know, do I buy Safaricom? Do I buy Stanchat? Do I buy KCB? Do I buy Kakuzi? And you don't even know how to select a good stock portfolio for yourself. And you just want to penetrate the market, acclimatize yourself with how things work, then the equity fund is a good investment option if you're just starting with stock market investing. Because what's going to happen is that you give your money to the fund manager, the fund manager pulls this money together with the resources of other people, and then they are able to invest and pay you um, a return as and how the stock market is performing. Now, one of the things you need to remember is that stock market investing is risky by itself, which should ideally tell you that also the equity fund, because the underlying asset is the same, same stock market, the Nairobi Securities Exchange, obviously the gains and losses that occur accrue to you. All right. But it's a good investment in that if you want to withdraw your money, then you can withdraw your money within two to four working days and you can either withdraw at a loss or at a gain. 
what i advise people is with stock market investing you want to be patient because the stock money the stock market has actually been known historically to generate good results so the first four options that i have just talked to you about are the money market fund the bond fund the balanced fund and the equity fund all these four funds are found in unit trust or asset management companies in Kenya. So you will find them in investment companies majorly and also insurance companies. Now, before we move to the next three, um, a couple of things about unit trust investments that you need to understand is that one, the, of all these first four funds, the one that guarantees capital preservation is only the money market fund because the money market fund invests your money in very secure assets such as treasury bills and bonds and also bank deposits so because of the underlying asset that makes the money market fund secure and therefore the company is able to guarantee capital preservation okay but for the rest of them the bank the bond fund is significantly low risk also because bonds are significantly safe but there's a level of risk that comes with corporate debt but it's very minimal and then obviously the balance fund comes with moderate risk and the equity fund comes with high risk so only the money market fund guarantees capital preservation the rest of them there's a level of risk associated but if you can give your investments some time and understand the underlying asset beneath that like the underlying asset of that particular investment choice then they are very very good investments to help you expose your money to these securities that i've just described now the fifth option that you can invest with as little as 5,000 Kenyan shillings is stock market investing. Yes, stock market, like the Nairobi Securities Exchange stock market. Let me give you an example, okay? So with 5,000 Kenyan shillings, what are some of the shares that I would buy? For starters, Safaricom. I'm a big fan of Safaricom shares. I've bought some myself. And this is because it is one of the best performing um, telecommunication companies in Kenya, right? So the stock is probably maybe 43 or 44 shillings per share, all right? So according to the Nairobi Securities Exchange regulations, you buy a minimum of 100 shares per trade. That means that if I want to buy any shares of any companies, I cannot buy anything less than 100 shares. So if I was to buy the bare minimum amount of Safaricom, which is 100 shares, then I would spend 100 times 43 shillings. Okay, so I would end up spending 4,300 to purchase the shares. Now, because you're probably using a broker, you're most definitely using a broker because you have to go through a broker or a brokerage firm to be able to purchase shares off of the Nairobi Securities Exchange. There is a certain percentage of brokerage fee that you have to pay. Okay, so with the broker that I use, uh, which is Diane Blair Investment Bank, they charge maybe two. 2.2 or 2.3 percent so the brokerage fee is going to be 2.3 percent of 4,300 which is a couple of hundreds I want to believe it's probably 200 or 300 bob so the 4,300 for buying 100 Safaricom shares plus the brokerage fee of let's estimate 300 bob that's around 4,600 for me to make a purchase an initial purchase of Safaricom stock if you're buying shares that are probably a bit more affordable like KCB at 36 bob or Kengen at uh, maybe I don't know whether it's 12 bob or, uh, or around 12 bob or 8 shillings you are actually able to start slowly accumulating and and building a stock market portfolio with every 5,000 shillings that you actually get to um, to divert into stock market investing. Now, I tell people this, stock market investing without a doubt comes with risk because companies rise and companies fall. But when you are strategic about how you're choosing companies, in this sense, what do I mean? You understand the more the business model of the company, the industry it ever it operates in, you've evaluated the financial health of the company, you have understood the level of risk the company is taking with their debt and whatnot. If you're able to do some research before you actually choose companies to invest in, it is one of the best ways to build sustainable wealth in the long term because you'll be getting passive income as long as this company keeps growing 
yeah you'll be accumulating capital gains and you'll also be getting dividends on the years that they pay a good dividend so if you're interested in getting in stock market investments and you can get five thousand shillings what are you waiting for okay the next investment option is personal pension funds all right now where do you find personal pension funds in kenya you find personal pension funds in insurance companies most of these insurance companies that are giving us uh, unit trust products insurance products they are, they also have personal pension funds all right now i'm very big on talking about retirement planning because when most of us are thinking about where to put our money we never think of life after employment all right now if you sit and do the math of how long you are predicting you might have after retirement so let's assume i start working um maybe at the age of 30 um and then i'm retiring at the age of 60 i've worked 30 years and probably if i retire at 60 and maybe i die at 100 years old i actually have more post-retirement years than my work years I, I worked 30 years but my post-retirement years are 40 years now listen it's already hard enough to sustain the 30 years that we are adulting and working in order to earn that pension but you need to understand that when you are retired when you're no longer employable or pensionable you need not just be asset rich and by asset rich i mean you have land you have property and whatnot you also need to be liquid you need to be cash rich yeah because you need medical care you need moving around you need upkeep and all that all right and 40 years is such a long time i mean and and i tell people just estimate how much you're using per month right now okay and i want you to factor in inflation 40 years from now 50 years from now or, or however long from the uh from now to the time that you're actually retiring okay and and when you multiply how much you're spending in a month by 12 you'll get how much you're spending in a year all right and that's 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 a lot of money so if you spend a uh, 100k every month that means that on an annual basis you're spending 1.2 million all right now extrapolate that to 20 years post-retirement 25 years post-retirement you need a lot of money in terms of for you to be cash rich uh during retirement now there are many ways to go about it and one of the best ways to start before you get your rentals before you get your stock market investments it is good to start with a personal pension plan all right now a personal pension plan is an account that you open to personally be contributing towards your pension so for business people who are not employed this is a good option i personally put my money in um, a personal pension fund uh in cic because i i don't have an employer right so i'm personally contributing towards my pension or towards my retirement fund all right so if you do or if your employer doesn't do it for you you can do it for yourself um if your employer is just doing nssf for you and that's all they're doing for you i can guarantee you that's not enough money to retire with so you can supplement that with uh on the side with a personal pension plan now most of them require a minimum of a thousand bob to open one so that means mama mboga can have a pension plan you, you as a business person you can have a pension plan as a content creator you can have a pension plan like anyone can get started and obviously the more you earn the more you can contribute or put towards your personal pension plan now personal pension plans guarantee capital preservation which means that even in hostile economic conditions then you're still going to be able to retain the contribution that you made and you'll find that most of them give you an interest now the interest rates vary because this is a long investment and you're going to find that sometimes you get seven percent eight percent nine percent sometimes even ten percent compounded per annum all right um but most of them will guarantee four percent or five percent interest on the worst case scenario so you're guaranteed that you'll get your capital back and a four percent return on the bare minimum regardless of how bad the economy has been so you want to take that seriously because retirement is not an age it is actually a number because you can still get there and be broke all right last but not least another thing that you can do with five thousand kenyan shillings is to start a business or a side 
hustle. All right. There are very many things that you can start with just as little as 5,000 Kenyan shillings. A few ideas. You could go, if you are into content creation, you could buy a tripod with as little as, um, as little as, uh, 2000 like the one that i've been using this is the uh tripod that i've been using before i got the one that i'm using right now and it's it was slightly above 2000 or maybe 2500 kenyan shillings and this tripod has made me so much money because i'm posting my igtv videos on it i'm doing the kind of content that converts my followers into clients and makes me money i've recorded with my phone and this tripod that is something that you can invest in your business with the other thing is if you're into fashion and you want to maybe start small you could get stock from um Gikomba or even um you know research on where the people who start thrift shops actually get their um stock from and with five thousand i believe you can get a few pieces to start a thrift shop with all right with five thousand if you're completely unemployed and there are some empesa shops around and some salons around you could actually start cooking some packed food go to kamukunji get the plastic um maybe a dozen or two of the plastic um the plastic packaging and cook from your house and deliver the food i mean there's so many businesses that you can start and side hustles with as little as 5,000 Kenyan shillings. Now, most of us think that we need a lot of money to start and run businesses. But I tell people, financial access is the is is one of just one of the problems that you will probably face when you're starting a business you need proof of concept you need to understand where people are sourcing their stock from you need to understand managing money in the business you need to understand sales and marketing how to establish yourself as a thought leader how to sell your product how to sell your service so if you can have a, um as little as 5000 Kenyan shillings you could even invest in a class to be able to learn those things as you work your way through raising money the big money for the big purchases for your business all right so those are the seven things that you can do all right with five thousand kenyan shillings i'm just going to do a quick summary of them we have the money market funds the bond funds the balanced funds and the equity funds all those are under one umbrella of unit trusts which are collective investments and then we have the stock market investing uh, personal pension plans and finally starting a business or a side hustle i really hope that this video was helpful and enlightening for you guys if you have any other ideas that you have kindly drop them in the comment section below if you have any questions uh, put it down there i'm also going to take some time to be responsive responding uh on the same um and i'm very happy that you took the time to watch this video thank you so much remember to like this video uh subscribe to my channel and share with your family and friends thank you so much for watching i'll see you on the next episode of finance friday